I am like a monkey trying to open a banana after taking 15 shots of Jaeger. I cannot figure out how to get in the thing. I don't know where the seams are. I don't know how it's constructed. I feel like I'm Albert Einstein trying to figure out the probability of relativity calculation or something. Uh, so I appreciate the clear packing tape so I know where to cut and open the knife. Usual stuff. Thank you for supporting our small family business. These guys are awesome. Scratch card. Open that later. Uh... Handwritten notes. What's a mummy's favorite music? Rap. Oops, not in frame. Rap. Thank you so much, NCB. These guys are cool. Uh, got the usual Sour Patch Kids. Have a sticker. No patches. I can't remember if they send patches. Uh, not this time. Probably not an expensive enough knife to uh, do the patch. Because I'm pretty sure I got this patch in a previous one. Uh, which is pretty cool. So, Microtech... Microtech knives. Oh my gosh. Surprise, surprise. That's a change for this channel, right? Microtech? Certainly not something that I've featured on this channel for the past 12 years or so or more. Uh, this is another, another amphibian, but, ooh, hoo -hoo, oh my, uh, but a little bit different. This is the aluminum handled variant. Uh, I believe, whoo, that's smooth. Oh man, this thing is rock solid. Uh, you know I had to do the serrations. Uh, just, I'm just a big fan, especially on these recurves, but in general, I like serrations. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about serrations here at the end here, because I know people are freaking out in the comments about how stupid it is that I like serrations. Uh, but yeah, we have the amphibian, right? You've seen the amphibian. It's been featured all over. I have unboxed or featured, this is my third one, I think. I sold one of them, so I still have my carbon fiber DLC because that one's just sweet. And then I sold my plain edge tan version after I bought this one, uh, just because I didn't need three and I didn't love the tan version. And I wanted to try this aluminum one and it is very hefty. Let's see what the weight is on this, just because I'm curious. It is noticeably a hefty, hefty boy. 6.5 ounces, if I remember correctly, the G10 version, I think, was 6 ounces. The carbon fiber DLC was like 5.5. So literally half an ounce jump on each version, even though this feels like a little bit more than half an ounce, but maybe not. Now, from what I understand, let's see if it says anything on it. On the packaging, uh, ramlock, fluted, apocalyptic, serrated. Doesn't even say aluminum. Uh, I think the A probably means aluminum, but uh, yeah, interesting. It doesn't say aluminum on the sticker there. I've heard it's 7075, which is interesting because Microtech uses 6061 and like everything else. Um, I wish they used 7075. So it makes me leery to think that this is 7075 because uh, there's a good amount of machining going on here, machining out this pocket, the fluting, the choils. Uh, that's most of it. And of course, all the holes for the hardware because um, 7075 is way superior to 6061 all around. The only negative to 7075 is the material itself costs more and then it's harder to machine. Um, that's the only reason companies don't don't use it. It's just, it's more cost prohibitive, but with how much Microtex cost, I would think they should, uh, bump that up to 70, 75 across the board. That's too bright. Let's, let's lower this. Yeah, there we go. 70, 75. So I, I don't know. I, I don't think I've seen anything officially saying it's 70, 75 aluminum, uh, but I've heard people say it is. So I don't know if anybody knows for sure, let me know in the comments uh, M390 MK Steel, which is the proprietary steel that Bowler is doing for Microtech. Uh, I don't think it's a big difference, just tweaked a couple of the, the numbers. Uh, really, it's more of a, a marketing thing as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's still kind of cool that Bowler would do that. Microtech uses, obviously, a lot of their steel, pretty much exclusive M390 for the last year or so. Um, so they kind of created their own proprietary probably to keep them coming back. This has the apocalyptic finish on it, 
which uh, I interpret as an acid etch with a stone wash. I know some people have said that they think it's a paint similar to the tactical black versions or even a DLC that's been stone washed. Doesn't look like that to me. Um, those sort of finishes are typically darker and more contrasty, whereas this one's a lot more of a light acid wash appearance. But, you know, I don't know. What do, what do I know? Uh, Microtech doesn't divulge all of their kind of information on their knives, which is interesting. Uh, for example, uh, completely going off on a tangent here, but the, the Hera 2 prototype that I have has been mentioned that it has a new opening and closing mechanism, and it certainly feels like it, but I can find no information on what that is or what that means or, or anything. So Microtech is, is pretty tight-lipped with a lot of their details on their knives, which is kind of interesting. But fluted handles, anodized. Like I said, the weight... Um, Weight is nice. It just gives it that solid, super solid feel, uh, having that extra weight in the handle. I, I like it. When I first saw that they were doing aluminum handles, I wasn't that into, into it. Um, I just generally prefer G10, but uh, eventually I came around, and I'm glad I did because this one is pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, a couple things that are cool about it is it doesn't cost any more for the aluminum. Uh, it doesn't cost any more for the apocalyptic finish. This is the standard price. I think this was 307 a little bit more because the serrations cost like five bucks extra. But other than that, this is the same cost as the G10 version. Um, it's, it's just all the same. So definitely kind of cool. And the other thing, and I've mentioned this uh, before, is I like how Microtech does their finish on all the hardware. So the pocket clip, the body screws, the ram lock switch, the backspacer which is all titanium by the way well the backspacer is titanium clips titanium not sure on the switch titanium or aluminum uh, i'm not sure uh, and then you know stainless i assume hardware uh, the thumb studs right here everything is the apocalyptic finish along with the two-tone blade which is cool because i'm sick of companies that do a different blade finish on the blade and then everything else is just standard and it doesn't match it doesn't flow and it's a little bit of a cheap out. So very, very cool. Uh, in in this day and age, with this economy, with the way the knife company is going, I think these are an excellent value. Uh, but don't take my word for it. The fact that these things sell out so fast, along with the other ram locks, the stitches are sticking around a little bit longer now. But even those sell out. Uh, this ram lock line is just taken off. People are absolutely loving these. And I, I see why, because they're cool, cool knives. So let me know down below, what do you think of the aluminum version? Is it something that you would pick up? Do you like the idea of the extra heft, uh, kind of the all metal knife, right? This is all metal. There's no plastic or polymer or G10 or anything like that anywhere in this knife. Maybe I'll take that back, actually. Uh, the ball bearing race housing could be nylon. I'm not sure. I can't remember what, what Microtech's using anymore if they are using metal races for the ball bearings, but that would be it. Potentially the ball bearing race. Everything else is all metal. Is this something that you would be interested in getting, carrying? Do you think it's cool? I was going to say, do you think it's worth paying more for, but it doesn't cost any more. So would you pick this over the G10? Let me know. Comments down below, like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'll catch you guys later.